Hey there, this is Doc's Market Minute for Tuesday, July 28th. Waiting on the Fed for tomorrow. That should be exciting as always. We'll be biting our nails to see what Yellen is going to say. Now, this period that we've had over the last few months has been one of the trickiest to, to trade for some time because we really haven't seen a sideways pattern like this in a while. And actually, this has been built up of two patterns, actually a rising wedge, which started to unfold and is now turned into more of a megaphone pattern over the last couple of months. So you can see this megaphone pattern here that we've been talking about for a while. So that shows that things are becoming a little bit more unstable. So the point here is that we can't afford to have a bias going forward because I think with all of its energy, we are going to see a tremendous move coming out of here very, very soon. And you can't afford to be on the wrong side of this. Now, initially what's going to happen is whenever the initial move happens, it's going to feel wrong. It's going to feel like, well, that doesn't make any sense because everybody, you know, if it goes to the upside, everybody will be bearish. And nobody will be on board for that. Or likewise, if the move is to the downside, it'll come from the highs. So nobody will be bearish. Everybody will be bullish. So this is why it's so important to be agile and not get yourself get caught into one of these wild biases. Now, let me show you the, the difference here. Lately, what we've been talking about is a head and shoulders pattern. Okay, and we had a downside target of down here. And, you know, again, that was all last month. And it doesn't seem to have worked out so far. And this is very common. We've seen these head and shoulders patterns over the last couple of years again and again, and they have not worked out. But what I'm also seeing and what I'm not hearing anybody talk about is actually an inverted head and shoulders pattern now. Now this doesn't make sense because of all the negative news that we've had lately. This would be an inverted head and shoulders with a neckline up here, right around the 2130 area of the S&P. And if the price is able to build on today's low and generate a higher low in the markets, then we will in fact be printing that right shoulder. And this could lead to a target which is approximately Oh, I'm going to say it's about 90 points or so. It's about a 90 point target on the S&P. And that's going to reach uh, prices of maybe 2220, if you can imagine that. If you can imagine the S&P being at 2220 sometime in the next couple of months, if that doesn't make any sense to you, then check your bias at the door. Make sure that you're not biased one way or the other, that you're letting price action really call the shots for how you're trading. I want to finish up today's market minute by talking about China and I've been talking about China quite a bit lately and I think there is a specific path that we're going to see the Chinese charts on. Now this is not the Shanghai Stock Exchange, this is the FXI which is just kind of a, um, a derivative ETF of China, of the big cap stocks of China. This is the large share ETF, China large cap. Right, so it's not the perfect analog of the Shanghai SSEC, but it's close enough. It's close enough. It's going to follow this pretty well. Okay, so what we have is we have an initial shot over the bow that's happened here in the last couple of months as the, the market has just been crushed. So what we're going to see is it's not all going to just keep on going lower like this, like everybody feels. What we're going to see is we're going to see periods of disbelief and acceptance and euphoria even within these short cycles. So we start this exercise from the daily chart, which is the, the smallest time frame that we're showing here. And what we're going to see is that reversals come from the inside out. We're going to see this reverse at some point here. It's going to put in a higher low, okay? And what's going to happen is if there's buying that comes in after the higher low, all these people down here that went short really late in the game are going to have to scramble and buy back their shares to move out. So what this means is it's going to create the next weekly swing higher. Now that's going to catch everybody's attention. And what you're going to see is that, you know, news reports that China is all fixed and that the government, you know, buying equities has fixed their problems. So it's a Eastern analog to USQE and 
etc 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 we're going to see the same kind of news cycle that occurs and this this will take a few weeks to play out and the Chinese will do their best job to put a, a nice face on it and say yep we fixed our problem it's all over well that's true to some extent but what's going to happen is the institutions that know better are going to sell into that strength they're going to make themselves whole again so perhaps if they bought on this dip down here they are going to get out at the very first opportunity and maybe it's not just them too it may be also individual investors as well too that are just absolutely you know scared to death down here that they're going to lose everything that they have and maybe even already have maybe they've already been margin called who knows right but as this comes to play and it usually happens at some type of fib retracement whether it's 38 to 50 percent or maybe even as far as 61.8 but that will cause a, a huge amount of overhead supply at this area, and it's going to have a very difficult time getting through that and additional buying. I mean, who's going to want to go through this all over again? So no, so what's going to happen from here is the selling should overwhelm the buying, and we're going to have a second wave down on this. Now, this may all, I don't know the timing of this, this may all just work out to be the first monthly wave down and then we will have a bigger rally back up which will print the monthly high this will take months for this to play out if you go back and look at the s p 500 in early 2008 you can see how long this took to really play out but again what the point i'm trying to make here is this all moves in waves and this is all based on the same psychology that occurs again and again and again this never ever will stop i don't care how many machines they bolt to the stock market i don't care how many high frequency traders or algorithms or whatever we have running that you're always going to have human beings with their finger over the switch getting ready to punt or bail on a trade right and this is what causes these emotions of fear and greed so watch for the bounce on China. It's going to happen here within the next few weeks and, and watch the news cycle. And when everybody is convinced that China is going to go higher indefinitely, in fact, when Kramer starts talking about being bullish on China, that might be a great time to start to sell call spreads into the FXI. That is it for today's Market Minute. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you tomorrow.